All right, see, we left off talking, talking about some installation topics. What was my incredible drawing about right there? Yeah, you know what I've forgotten? Is there yeah, let's see. Couldn't I have gone like this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So make sure you put the right gasket in the hole is the correct opening. Otherwise, you will have a loss of power. Uh, let's see. Um, set the controls properly. When you attach the controls, the uh, aircraft controls to the carburetor, I'll talk specifically about that, you must set them up in such a way that it works properly. The worst thing that would happen, not the worst thing, but it would be a bad thing if the pilot takes the throttle and goes all the way in and out there in the carburetor, it goes part of the way on, wouldn't it? What's the chance of that happening? I just worked on an airplane the other day that was like that. Yeah. Yeah, they were complaining about all kinds of stuff. And it's, it's the one I had to sync the carburetors on. And so we quickly did the sync on one. And I'm like, okay, <clears throat> that's how you sync it. Is that, you know, but wait, let's, you know, time out here. Let's, let's back up, all right? I don't feel comfortable with any of this stuff. I want to back up and start from the beginning. So, you know, we quickly did the goal but then i was not comfortable with what the goal was and i said let's 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 check everything and assume nothing and come to find out yeah it's really my three-quarter throttle 75 percent throttle when you went wide open i'm like well that's the problem right there so yeah so uh controls should go stop to stop where inside the cockpit, inside the cockpit or on the engine on the engine, on the engine. Stop to stop on the engine. So if I push the throttle all the way forward and the throttle stops and I still have that much left in the cockpit, stop what is that little bit called? Buffer. buffer zone. It's called cushion. It's called cushion. So you should have about, well, the book says about one-eighth to one-quarter inch cushion. So one-eighth to one-quarter inch cushion. I don't like an eighth to a quarter. I would prefer a quarter to a half personally as a pilot because when I go all the way to full throttle, I'd be able to feel right there that it's clearly got some cushion. So I set mine up just a little bit more cushion than that. When I first bought my plane, yeah, flying all the way home, it's like right up to the stop. There was no cushion whatsoever and it bugged me the whole way home. Um, they worked really hard to make them both hit at the exact same time, so it was fine. So, um, so the uh, let's see, stop at component, stop. Well, I'll say at carburetor. Carburetor should always always asterisk um, contact stop. Um, it should always contact stop. Stop at carb should always stop. Should contact stop before. Uh, control in cockpit. And what's my always asterisk all about? There's always an exception to that rule. Remos aircraft are an exception to that rule. They have such a large amount of travel in what you can achieve in the cockpit in such a short amount out at the carburetor that if you actually set it up that way that you would end up getting such a big slop in um, in the in the linkage the uh, control linkage that that it can actually raise up and wrap around a nut and not allow you to operate the carburetor so that particular carburetor the manual actually says to use the cockpit as a stop so Remos, yeah. Yeah, what do you expect from a light sport? Um, yeah, that's that's the important stuff right there. There's an airworthiness directive. I'll just throw this out there if you ever look at your notes again. So there's an AD on Cessna. 
And let me see. Yeah, I've got a carburetor here. Shoot, there's no throttle shaft. So you, you have the throttle shaft. I'm going to just be with my throttle shaft. This can be the going into the going into the carburetor right there. We're worried about the throttle shaft. And some of these have a push pull on them with a heim joint. You know what a heim joint is? Okay. That's the little ball that's encased in something. So you have that little ball in there. The bolt is going to go through all this. And this is encased in some sort of thing right here with threads in it. And that goes off to the control. Well, these heim joints right here can break. And when they break, the ball stays put and the housing flops off. So there's an airworthiness directed to put a large area washer. So an AN970 large area washer there. So that it sandwiches that heim joint between the large area washer and the throttle arm. So I bring that up because it's really common to see people put this big washer in all kinds of crazy. You know, I see it. Sometimes they'll put it right here. Sometimes they'll put it on this side. It's like, well, don't do not do that. It goes right there. Right Is there, there. Uh, rules about how thick, how thick a spacer is a washer? So you stack up with like an eighth of an inch, kind of like, uh, you know, no, between the... There isn't. It's just not that I'm aware of. If most production aircraft, one, one or two washers is all you ever need. But... Home built stuff like that, sometimes you see them stacked up on there pretty good. I've never seen a rule. Uh, troubleshooting. So, what kind of troubleshooting can we get into here? And really, that's what this is all about. The, only, the whole reason why you study the inside of a carburetor, it's not that anybody's ever going to take a carburetor apart and go, explain this. Uh, it's all about troubleshooting. If you don't understand the component, then your troubleshooting falls apart. So, and then you do stupid stuff like tell somebody to use shop air to blow out the carburetor, right? <laughs> so, you need to know your troubleshooting will direct you on how to make money. So, troubleshooting. Troubleshooting. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see, carburetor leaks, let's see, air. carb leaks, while well, engine is off. All right, what are some, pro what are some probable causes? Float. Little seat. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a Stromberg. It's a Stromberg. <laughs> <laughs> What else? What did you say? I feel like that's a personal attack. I like Strombergs. I know people always say that. But they, they leak a little bit. They're, they're more prone to leaking. Stromberg, what else did you have? Needle. Well, it's obviously it's, uh, it's needle and seat are leaking. What can you do about that? Change the float level. No, no. If the float level is correct and the needle and seat are leaking. Change them and lap them? Yeah, change them. Well, if you can only lap it if it's a metal yeah, needle. Metal, metal. Don't try lapping the rubber-tipped ones. It, it comes <laughs> apart. So you may have a little bit of leak right there. Well, what can you do about that leaking right there? Turn the fuel off. Well, yeah, if it's, <laughs> we did with our Stromberg. Yeah, we just turn the fuel off when we're done flying it. Um, or you can take it apart and lap in the needle and seat if it's a Stromberg and it's got metal components. But if it's... The Marvel Shoveler, then it's got a rubber tip, and that's that's not it shouldn't leak. Uh, typically, uh, Marvel Shovelers just don't leak because they're rubber tip needles. Uh, what else could it be? What about the float? All right, float level too high. So what could cause that to be? Well, leaky float. Float level set wrong. So how do you fix that? <clears throat> Reset the level. Set the seat right. Set it right. Do it right. So I had a conversation today with somebody. <clears throat> Their carburetor was the the parting gasket was was like 
kind of leaking out the parting gasket, which is not that unusual. But the problem is, if the fuel is raised up enough to leak out of that parting gasket, what is your concern? Above the discharge nozzle, what else is your concern? Bad. You got a leaky float. Well, if you got a leaky float, that could be an emergency, right? So what's the solution? It's exactly what I said. Put in a composite float, the blue composite float. Once you have a blue composite float, if you guys have watched the video, I don't know, have you watched the video? Yeah, I watched it. Those things are like indestructible. They're indestructible. Yeah, you can break it in half and use half of the float. Put a car on top. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so... All right, so two guys watched it. So they got these indestructible floats, which you are required to put in if you split the case. Carburetor, so I said, well, here's what you do. You know, you're gonna take it apart and you're gonna put in a new gasket. Why don't we take it one step further? Why don't we put in the new composite float? That way, if you get a little blue staining around the gasket, just wipe it off and go because you have no fear of, the, of being a, a leaky float. It's just, Fuel is just getting up there and getting it wet. So what? Who cares? It'll be fine. So, and you'll never have to do this again. Not to mention, legally, the manual says if you open up, you're supposed to put in a composite float. So, opening it up, putting in a paper, a new gasket, and resealing it, you got to torque it by the manual. Well, the manual says you can't do that. You got to use a blue float. So now you're kind of uh, getting out there on your own. Now, it'd be one thing if it was a service bulletin that said, hey, we recommend that if you. But the manual, the most current manual tells you you have to do that. So, all right. So carb leaks when it's off. Um, how, much did your, how much did the one cost for your boat, the composite one? Oh, there's like a, the kit's 150 bucks. Oh, okay. it's, it's not even worth like, yeah, an, that doesn't sound bad. it's like, uh, what is that? 0.01 of an AMU? <laughs> Aviation maintenance unit, that's $5,000. Oh. Are you aware of this joke? See, things in aviation are so expensive that if you talk in AMUs, an aviation maintenance unit, okay. which is $5,000, well, then a new prop is only two AMUs. Doesn't that sound much better than $10,000? <laughs> it's two. Spring capsules are only four AMUs. The what? Spring capsules. For yeah, our, for spring four capsules. Four, 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 it's four. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's that other joke. Please... My, the, my worst fear is that my wife will sell my airplane parts for, for, for what I told her I paid her for. <laughs> Just, uh, that oh, goes for everything. I think it was something about anyway mixture. Let's see, mixture too lean at idle. Too lean at idle. How do I know if my mixture is too lean at idle? It doesn't have a rise. What does a rise mean? What is it? Pull the mixture control red knob all the way to the back. And Pull the back. red knob all the way back, and... It just yeah. dies instead of rising. Just, just dies instead of rising. What carburetor does that work for? Anything other than a Stromberg. Well, how do I check a Stromberg, then? Screw it all the way in, screw it back in. Yeah. Or, or, or you... I would, nope, very rare that you'd have a manifold pressure of the Stromberg, especially then, not the small ones. All right, so how would you, first of all, how would you know that your Stromberg is too lean at idle? Oh, you probably won't. Because? Because it doesn't have a mixture control that works at idle. Right? So maybe as I accelerate, it kind of stumbles a little bit as it transitions. So in that case, I would try enriching it and see if that works. Follow? Yep. How do you turn off an aircraft with a Stromberg carburetor? Turn off, the ignition. turn off the ignition. That is a key or switches. Okay. So a mixture too lean at idle. So again, how would I know if it's a Stromberg? Probably won't, unless it stumbles when I'm accelerating. Um, what could cause a mixture to, oh, so how would I know it's too lean at idle on a marble shoveler? You just no said, you're going to pull the red knob out and you're going to see no rise. No rise. It just Drops. dies. Okay. Mixture too lean at idle. What, what could be causing that to happen? The pushings, uh, near the throttle plate or the pushings at the throttle plate are, uh, are bad and you're going to go. 
Some sort of manifold leak. Manifold leaks are worse at idle. 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 Okay, yeah, idle. idle. Uh, so th throttle bushings. Throttle bushings, gaskets, hoses, all that stuff. Sniffle valve. Um, possibly fuel pressure too low. I've never encountered that. It'd have to be a low wing with a uh, fuel pump. Um, what else? Tense. You don't have a manifold leak and uh, it's a high wing airplane. So that would throw those out. What else could it be? The idle mix not adjusted correctly. That is not out of the realm of possibility. What else? Internal of the carb. What if we, got, we have a carb problem? What, what inside the carb could give us a problem? Oh, float level was set. Oh, okay. Float level too low or blockage of idle jet. I like that. Okay. Mixture too lean. <clears throat> Mixture too lean at. Uh, cruise or full power. How would I know it's too lean at cruise or full power? No. Lack of power. Ah, possibly. Lack of power. Possibly. Um, possibly lack of power. Detonation. Well, uh, you no. wouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> my okay. engine melted. <laughs> I was thinking of my airplane. So, what, what are some of the ideas that we had there? We had um, rough. Lack of power. How about EGT? What would I see? It'd be a little bit warmer. EGT too high. High. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fuel is burning in the exhaust. So where should my EGT be at full power? Fifty degrees below. No, nope, full power. Wide open. Like how many degrees? Yeah. Did I take that chart? Was like. You don't know what degree is supposed to be. It's arbitrary. Okay, it's arbitrary, but how many degrees? Past the oh, well, One side of peak or the other should it be? Yeah. Uh uh. It's the worst place to be. At takeoff, we should be about 250 or so degrees rich of peak. Oh, yeah. For, yeah, for max power? Nope, for max not dying in your engine. Um, right there, I like this one. Stupid thing. That's a hell of a I say, I want to see this one. It goes, no, you don't. There we go. So oh, at 85% yeah. power, Richard Peak, Climb Cruise, uh, Peak EGT zero. There's 225, so yeah, I was right. Two, about 225, 250 degrees. What's that? Ruby zone, yes. I thought you said something else. I forgot what you called it. I forgot what color. Ruby's good, yes. Uh, it does say on the bottom, red fin. Um, you excuse Coopers. You <laughs> walked in front of the projector the other day and it started a little burn hole. <laughs> I used to do that. I used to, I used to start fires with my glasses. We're not surprised. <laughs> okay, so back to the discussion. Because now that I'm asking these questions, these are all the questions I can ask at an oral. Um, EGT too high would be the problem. It's too close to peak. So where should it be? At least 225 degrees rich of peak. 225 degrees rich of peak. So if I happen to know that my airplane is usually, oh, you know, peak is around 1,500 degrees, it should be about... Either way. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 that'd be really bad. <laughs> 1250. Yeah, about 1250 or so. Yes. All right, so pilot comes in and says, wow, you know, I got, my EGT is 
really high on takeoff, climb out. My CHTs are really high. Um, it could be lack of power. Maybe not. It doesn't have to be all three of these. It runs fine, and I have plenty of power. Well, yeah, because you're running, you're running at peak EGT. Oh, that'd give you more power, wouldn't it? So you could have more power. So I wrote lack of power, but we, depending on how big the leak is, it could be more power. Follow? All right. Um, I want to go this way. What was the pilot's complaint? That maybe EGT is too high. So I say, does it run rough? No. Uh, EGT is high, CHT is high on takeoffs um, and climb out and cruise. Used to not be that way. Now, now they're very high. Um, so it says EGT is high, CHT is high. Does it run rough? No. Have a lack of power? No. So actually, I got more power, it feels like. Why, why is all that? Because instead of running um, way over here, rich of peak, now he's brought it way over here. So you're getting more power because you've leaned it out instead of being rich of so rich. Yeah, you brought it right in the danger zone. Yes, but that's his complaint. I don't know what's wrong. Suddenly my EGT is really high. It used to not be that high. What's the problem? It's running lean. It's running lean. Well, why is it running lean? Mixture, too lean at cruise or full power. That's what we're trying to talk about. The these, are the, these are the things a pilot might complain of. What's causing it to be too lean at cruise or full power? Blocked main air bleed. Uh, we got blocked main air bleed. Why don't I have that on here? Blocked main air bleed. Would that run leaner or richer? Richer. Oh, richer. Yeah. Okay. That's why I don't have it on here. Um, what, are we, what else? Well, that's why we're here. We got to troubleshoot this stuff. Blockage of the main metering jet. That works. Let me see. Nah, I didn't. I don't have that on there, but I'll give that to you. So blocked, because that is true. Partial block. If I had a fully blocked main metering jet, what system would that affect? Both, all of them. All of the fuel comes out of the main metering jet and then goes off to the engine. What else we got? Uh, blocked spray nozzle. Spray nozzle. Oh, discharge nozzle. Discharge nozzle, yes. Um. Okay. I have to be partial. Could a vacuum leak or a manifold pressure leak also cause that? I mean, even if it does yes, it would. Leak, even if it does kind of equalize? I guess if it's big enough. Yeah, it's big enough. Air is going to bypass the carburetor altogether. I think that's the number one issue, answer right there. Manifold air leak. What else? Low float level. Uh, float level low. What causes that? Incorrect setting. Incorrect setting or? If you leak into the float. Nope, that would make it go high. So it would have to be just a misadjustment. Yeah, just a Yep, misadjustment. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, uh, four. Could the linkages, uh, wasn't kind of obvious, improper install? That's what I'm saying, like it's hitting so a stop throttle, inside. Throttle, throttle okay, inside. yeah, not, not full throttle or something like that. All right, those are all good ones. Uh, let's see. We got manifold air leak. Oh, AMC. Out of adjustment. It's going lean when it shouldn't. Automatic mixture control. Uh, float level too low. Got that one. Um, control mixture. Mixture control. Not set properly. So when you go to full rich, it doesn't go to full rich out in the carburetor. So that was a good one. What about the block section two? Is it affecting the fuel metering force? 
Yeah, so there could be some different blockages in there. Um, how about? Fuel strainer clogged. And there's a lot more than, than this. Fuel strainer could be clogged. The fuel venting system could be clogged. Uh, that'll do it. If you have a low-wing aircraft that has a fuel pump, uh, I've, I've heard pilots say when they get some, because the tank has to be vented, right? And I've heard pilots say when they've had blocked vents, they can actually watch the tank start to collapse on the wing. I'm like, whoa, my, my wing is collapsing. Uh, fuel strainer clogged, fuel pressure too low. Uh, obstructed fuel line. Those are all possibilities. What is it not? It is not the magneto. Um, yeah. what, what is something somebody be likely to touch that it clearly isn't? <laughs> yes. Ooh, how about um, economizer not working properly? What's the proper name I should be using right now, though? Fuel enrichment. Power enrichment. Power enrichment. It's not like the MA45. But Thankfully, I now have one over here. It has the enrichment over here, right there, this needle. And that's got to be adjusted under this cap down in there. So if that was not set correctly, that could be a problem. Uh, let's see, mixture too rich at idle. Too rich at idle. Okay, float. Level too high. Okay. Blocked air bleed, okay. Idle mix set wrong. This is a big one. Primer line not closed and locked. We didn't really talk about primers. Primer, what is the primer? I'm going to talk about it. What? I'm going to talk about it right now. Okay, let's do it. Okay. So on. Many carbureted aircraft, I wish they would do this on fuel injected. The only fuel injected aircraft I know with primer lines on it is the Skymaster, and it makes it so easy to start. But what it is, in the cockpit, there is a plunger, and you have to unlock it, and you pull it back, and it, it sucks fuel from, we'll just say the fuel tank. It's actually the gas escalator down on the, uh, the fuel strainer gas collator that's at the lowest point of the aircraft. So there's a, a little tiny line, that little 16th inch line or smaller that goes up and into this plunger. So you pull the plunger back and you can hear fuel going up into this plunger. There's a check valve, so it only allows it to go this way. Then you push it forward and the check valve closes so it doesn't go back to where it came from. And another line goes up and either into a cylinder or into a little manifold that may go into two, three, four, five, or six cylinders. So when you push and spray it, then it's going to spray at the cylinder head for starting. It's, yeah, it, you can run an engine off of it. I've, I've run our Sky Masters off of it often because the fuel injection system hasn't ran for so long. I'll start it on the primer and I'll just sit there and run the primer, <laughs> you know. And it's a little slower than that. Just, you just got to get it right. And uh, I'll run it until it bleeds out all the air of the system, and then it catches with the fuel injection system and starts running. It's like, ah, oh, that worked. Um, so when the primer is in and locked, it has a little pin that goes in and blocks those two passages from meeting. But when it's out, then the engine has a low pressure in the manifold where that little ejector nozzle is. 
Everybody seeing this in your head? Yeah. Where the injector nozzle sprays the fuel, that's a low pressure. So what does it do? It's, suck it. it's got a low pressure, so it's going to suck it. So it's sucking fuel from that primer line, going back to the little plunger, through the plunger, down to the lowest point, and now you have Stretch. a little injector nozzle spraying fuel all the time into the engine. If you left it out and the check valve is in? If you left it out, period. Okay. If it is not in and locked, it is a... Because it, it'll suck that check valve open? Yeah. And it'll just spray fuel in there. Don't believe me? When you get a chance to run the ground power unit on your carburetor, go ahead and leave it unlocked and try and adjust your carburetor. <laughs> it's hilarious. I mean, not you guys, but every other class I've ever had, at least two or three groups will do it. And they will spend an hour adjusting the carburetor. So I come out and go, look, we got a long line. Obviously, you don't know what you're doing. You've been out here an hour. You got to wrap it up. No, I just can't. You know, it's just, no matter how lean I make the carburetor, I just... <laughs> It I still get like a 300 RPM rise. Well, why don't you try pushing the primer and unlocking it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, you know, I didn't say that. I just said, well, your time's up. <laughs> so, your classmates are getting angry with you. And then you start yelling at me. Hey, these guys are out there for all day. So, primer line, not closed and locked, will cause what? Too much rich. Mixture too rich. It'll do it through the whole spectrum. Does that gas generator always have always has gas going? I got. I hope so. If it doesn't, you're because yeah. <laughs> it goes tank, fuel selector, gas collator, gas collator, carburetor, okay. or fuel injection system. So if it doesn't, then you're gliding at that point. Uh, let's see. Mixture too rich. Yeah, we got that primer line Inverse. open. Okay. Yeah. I'm yep. thinking, like, what if there's a hole in that primer thing and then it's just sucking in extra air? <clears throat> what, what? Like, if the, the primer line, yeah, like say it was locked, but like somewhere in the line to the injector, it was had a hole in it, so then it was sucking in air through it. That, uh, you'd that, probably know that because every time you went to inject, it would spray out of that little spot. You have blue stain all over your engine. Yeah. Uh, let's see, mixture too rich at cruise speed. It's all the same stuff. Um, AMC, float level too high, manual mixture control not set correctly, fuel pressure too high, economizer valve open, accelerating pump stuck. Accelerating pump stuck open, I didn't have that one. So we could have a problem with the accelerating pump stuck open, those little check balls. Not likely, but it could. Um, yeah? I know it wouldn't apply on Stromberg, but on other um, carburetors, would um, a float that's leaky uh, cause this to happen as well? Cause what to happen? Where it's too rich at idle? Yes. Yep, that'd be, and we have to be careful. It would be too rich at idle, be too rich across the whole board. Okay. So, I didn't really distinguish that. I just had some ideas. Uh, poor acceleration, backfire, or missing when throttle is advanced. What do you think that could be? What'd you say? <laughs> no, no, I, I heard you say that. Poor that. acceleration. Is it system? Back, yeah, backfiring, or missing when throttle is advanced. Too lean. What's okay? So it's too lean. What? What's? What's not working? Maybe. Accelerator pump. I know. I have the answers in front of me, so it's easier. Uh, let's see. Okay. Let's just take a look at this. And we'll wrap this section up. All right. So we covered all that. What is this thing here? Don't look. Um, yes, uh, Homeland Security wants to talk to you. Um, there we go. We got the fuels. What is, uh, well, we got the fuels. There we go. There's our G100 ULs. Um, that's Sun T. Uh, peak pressure point. Which mixture burns the slowest? Rich? Lean can burn the slowest. What if I had a mixture that's 50 degrees rich a peak and one that's 50 degrees lean a peak? Which one burns the slowest? Rich. They're the same. More or less they're the same. They're about the same. And they'll be about the same until one stops and the other one keeps on going. Um, stoichiometric is how much? 15 to 1. 15 to 1. Um, what's the richest mixture that can probably burn? 18 to 1. 
Eight to one. What's the leanest? Eighteen to one. Eighteen to one. Why do we run a rich mixture at high power settings? Cooling. Cooling detonation. Why does it provide a cooler cylinder, and why does it protect against detonation? Slows down the flame front, moves the peak pressure point further after top dead center. Yeah. I know. All right. Uh, let's see. We talked about EGT. EGT. So where's kind of the worst place to run your engine at cruise? At cruise? Yeah. PGGT. Nope. Nope. Where's the hottest cylinder temperatures? What's that? 50 degrees rich of peak is the hottest cylinder point. So, I won't I said don't do that. You can do that all you want. I don't care. Make money working on airplanes, so that's good. Uh, let's see. I feel like I've really discussed this whole how do you know when your idle mixture is set correctly, but yet my orals tell me different, but <laughs> I guess we'll leave that alone. All right. Um, talked about best economy, which is green line. Best economy. Is that Rich or Lena Peak? Lena Peak. Lena Peak what? PGT. PGT. Best power was? Peak EGT, right in there, the star. Um, all right, we covered that. Let's see. This is Lycoming's chart. So, that, well, this is Continental's. This is Lycoming's. I know we didn't really talk much about it, but it really uh, says kind of the same thing here. So, um, it is rich, is it? Rich is to the right. No, rich, they're both to the right. I added the lines. So best economy, best economy is on, is where? Rich or lean? Or lean of peak, because here's the exhaust gas, that's peak. Max power is over here. It's interesting. So, oh, percent power. So max power, where does that put us on this engine? Yeah, about 100 degrees rich of peak, best power. Which is interesting because we look at this and best power. How are we doing for cylinder head temp? How are we doing for exhaust gas temperature? Not bad. So kind of interesting. Seems like 25 degrees rich of peak is the worst for temps. Yeah. Once again, 25 to 50. Yeah, 25 here. So I put 50 right about there, but still kind of in the bad zone. So either run it so best economy is going to be peak EGT best economy but again 50 degrees rich of peak not good 50 degrees lean of peak is that okay man look how cold that cylinder got over here yeah it's not a lot of power um, was there that's just enlarged yeah, I mean, who cares? Yeah. Um, I know we didn't look at this chart. It was best power mixtures for different power settings. Um, what was this one about? So best power. See, correction factor. I don't remember what I did with this chart. So had to do, I think it was just pointed out that the fuel air ratios were different for each power setting. Oh yeah, so this is in uh, your ratio, but it's not done in 15 to one or 12 to one. So for best power at, okay, so this is 2,900 RPM, 3,000 RPM, 3,150. So this is a lower power setting 
down here at the bottom. Lower power setting. And it shows that our fuel ratio for best power is right here. What is uh, 0.076, somebody? So 0 0.076, hit that X over 1 key, and it should give you the, I think this is that. Yeah. Anybody? Anybody? Don't go and make me get my calculator. Is it 0 0.076 X over 1? Uh, 14, uh, 14 to 1? Or I put, yeah, I put 07. <laughs> no, you got to put 0 0.076. 13.16. 13 13.16, right about here. 13.16. Thirteen point one six to one. What about this one here? So that's going to be point eight five. We'll call it eleven point seven. Eleven point seven to one. Okay, and this one right here is just on the other side of point nine. So point oh nine two. Ten point eight to one. Ten point eight to one. All right. So down here at the lower power settings. Best power is going to happen. Best power. Yep, best power. Right about 13.1. And then as we increase the power, it goes to 11.7. Is that more air or more fuel? More fuel? Needs more fuel to get best power. And we bring it all the way up here, 3150. That's 550 horsepower. <clears throat> Big engine. So even more fuel to get to best power. 30, ah, that's fast. I don't know what that is, turbine. Uh, effects of fuel air ratios on power at constant RPM. Let me see. It's the same thing, percent horsepower. Uh, I'm just going to start confusing people. All right. Um, yeah. Okay, we've talked about that, talked about that. I think it's a video. Uh, difference between air pressure here and the air pressure here is all right. Doesn't even say it. So we're cool. Mixture controls. Talked about mixture controls. Back suction needle, airport automatic mixture control. We talked about that. Economizer systems. Uh, needle economizer. Piston type. Uh, manifold pressure type. Uh, we talked about the fuel system through this. This is the economizer system on the MA4s and MA3s, if it has it. Uh, I will say that, you know, carburetors, they're, you know, this is like an MA4 SPA. There's a, um, I know the three line. There's an MA3 SPA, an MA3 PA, an MA3 A. So it, all those designators on the end will depend on what they've done inside the carburetor. All these bowls and, and tops, they're made about the same. And some of them, they just finish drilling a hole. Some of them, they plug a hole, just depending on what uh, the engine needs. Uh, we talked about all that stuff. That, that, Stromberg. We went over the Stromberg quite a bit. I didn't use these slides. Maybe I should have. Go back. Got our accelerator well. So what... Uh, Ignore the throttle valve. If the fuel is right here, what, what's the uh, condition of this carburetor? Be an idle or off. off. Uh, this is what the back suction mixture. We talked about that. See how it's all one color like it's supposed to be? Right. Yeah, maybe I should have used that one. Uh, we talked about fuel levels. We went over the Marlboro Schebler. Too fast. Let's see about that. What are these right here? Uh, idle, idle discharge nozzles. What are these two doing right now? Air bleeds. Air bleeds. And as the throttle plate comes down a little bit and starts aiming at this middle one, it becomes. And as this one aims towards this one, it's. And as the throttle goes a little bit below all three, then all three are doing what? Discharge. Still discharge nozzle, okay. Um, 
When you get into the Marvel Shovelers, I'm going to have you do Airworthiness Directives. There is an Airworthiness Directive on Marvel Shovelers. One of the things that you have to know is the difference between milled flat and spot faced. Did I go over this yet? Yeah. No. All right. Oh, you did in the video. Sorry. So the Airworthiness Directive does not... Oh, did I, good, I did in the video. does not really tell you the difference between a milled flat and spot faced. And this is where... A lot of students just guess. And that's just a good policy, right? You're working on an airworthiness directive that it's there because what happened? Lots of people have died, as they say, it was written in blood. And you've decided that you're now going to guess at what the meaning is or confirmation bias. So I'm going to make it fit what I want. Uh, don't do that. In fact, uh, fun fact. Um, so, I think I've, I've mentioned, I'm doing some consulting work for a particular shop in town. So I'm spending a couple hours a week or a day or whatever I can put in there. And they've got some pretty cool people um, that I enjoy being around. And so it's fun. And, and so I'm, you know, just helping them troubleshoot, teaching them some of the stuff that they don't know. Um, I don't want to sound like braggadocious. I don't mean to brag, so I'm not. The point, the place where I'm doing this, I was the chief inspector there for many years. And they had a lot of turnover. And so it didn't like convey to the new group. And so now they've gone back and said, okay, so I used to work there as chief inspector. I know the, where the stuff is, right? I know where the bodies are laid. So I'm helping them out. And uh, I went in today and one of the guys like, you're not gonna believe this. He said, they just bought a plane. And uh, they're going, you know, had it came with an annual, the 100 hour. I mean, it, it's good to go. But uh, their inspector's like, it's not good to go. He found a whole bunch of discrepancies. And then he started really getting into it. And then he had to do the annual. He's like, I don't trust the annual. I'm going to do the annual. So he does the annual, does the airworthiness directive list. Yeah, the propeller had an airworthiness directive due like 20 years ago. As, uh, 10, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, 14, 14 years ago. Yeah, 14 years ago. It was due 14 years ago, and every and like 3,000 hours ago, and every single person has wrote what the last person wrote. Airworthiness air directive not applicable by serial number. He shows me the front page of the serial number. It says applicable to all propellers models like 1A150, all serial numbers. It wasn't even like somebody guessed the wrong serial number or transposed it. It says all serial numbers, and somebody, everybody for the last 14 years has said, and they buy serial number. The FA is having a talk with these people. <laughs> uh, I'll finish this off. So, milled flask versus spot faced. When something is manufactured, a mill is like the big, when you guys are doing your oral, you're facing this way, right there, that's a mill. And I think on this side's a mill, right? It's like a fancy drill press. And so you have a, uh, you can put a cutting wheel on it and that cutting wheel can move across parts like this right here and make it flat. It wasn't flat when it was made. So they took a cutting wheel and it has a movable bed and it will go around and cut all this flat resurface heads. Re resurface heads all that so this has been milled flat the whole thing is flat this is milled flat right it's what they did with all these cutaways and milled it flat but there's also this thing called a spot face where this cutter is they come in different sizes but they're round and I think I used my pin when I was doing it and they're round and so you know you can go down it's usually bigger cutter than this and it would go all over or you can spot face something. This doesn't really have a good example of a spot face, but you would just come down, kiss it, and move away. And it's just gonna leave a circle the size of whatever cutter they used and move away. So if you look at this drawing right here, you can see right here how it's just a circle. So what would that be? Milt flat or spot face? That spot faced. Well, what if it was flat all the way across? Milled flat. What is this piece right here? That's that that part's milled flat. You can see it in the other dimension right there, how it's spot faced. And so this AD talks about where this screw goes right there. Is it milled flat? Now you can see if it was milled flat, how close it would get to that corner right there? Or is it spot faced? 
Spot face will give you more material over here. Milled flat will take away the material. So it asks you about that. So make sure you know about that. Well, you should, because I just told you. And the AD tells you if it's got, I uh, think, a, a milled flat, you have to throw it out. It's got to be spot faced. And it has to be safety wired in this way because this clamping screw right here, if it gets loose, then as you move the cockpit control, it will move this arm. This arm here is this arm here. This arm moves, but this one doesn't. And this one right here is attached to the butterfly. So you're moving the throttle in the cockpit and the butterfly is staying still. still. Now this one's got serrated pieces on it, so it doesn't do that. All right, um, let's see. We talked about that. Let's see, float, we did that one. That's the same drawing. Time check, sir. All right, break. I knew what time it was. He's got to finish his game. Ah. <laughs>